My name is Stephen Manners. I'm a food and beverage specialist and I'm giving a talk this afternoon on food and beverage revenue management and presenting a short case study on some, some work that's been done to improve revenues in particular venue. So why do you think HSMAI is important to the industry? Well, I think, I think that as an organisation, it provides a framework and days like today provide a lot of information to people that, that they might not norm, normally get in their in the, in the, in the, um, normal day-to-day -day life. And I just think it provides a proper network that, that, that people can rely on for information and, and everything else. I've been in the industry for 30 years. It's very fulfilling. Um, it's very exciting and I think for, for young people joining the industry it's got a, a great future it's a very fast expanding business and for me you know, the revenue management issues are, will, get, will get greater and greater so I just think you, that's the reason why you should be here today. And the owner said to me well Stephen the reason it was successful was price and I said no it wasn't the reason it was successful was because a we, the business gives great food it's a great location yeah, and more than anything else, we give value. And to bring people out and the other way to spend £12.50, it has to be valued and not just based on, <laughs> based on price. And we ended up on the, the two course having 42% uplift to the three course. And we had a drink spend average out over about £8 a person. So um, it made substantial money that month. Food and beverage strategy. Well, it's all about selling the right seat to the right customer at the right price for the right duration of time. What is right? Well, is it revenue per customer? A lot of places go on, on revenue per customer, what, what, what the average spend is. Some go on total spend of a check or a bill. Some go on maintaining exceeding GP levels, which I always have a problem with because do you want to have 70% of nothing or would you rather have 55, 60% of a whole lot more? The forte ethos that I came I was brought up in was always GP less wages is 40% if you're running an efficient operation. And that was always the mantra. We used to go out for our reviews every month. We used to make sure that we put a lot of costs into our variables to make sure the GP less wages always 40%. And that way you go on far easier review. But that's one of the ways that a lot of places are still have on GP. And I'll show you something in a moment, a case study, where we actually changed uh, some stuff to, to, to cash markup. A lot of places measure purely by customer satisfaction levels and not by finance, which, which surprises me. And again, it's an important factor. You know, TripAdvisor plays a large part in things <laughs> these days. You know, customer comment cards, the whole, <laughs> whole range of things make, make quite a difference. But the above factors don't necessarily, and I use the word necessary in there, um, offer a reflection of the outlet's revenue or profit performance because the different businesses have different ways they want to, to measure different things. Areas of focus, really, are capacity management. Um, I remember in hotels I used to run and operate where the number of rooms didn't equate to the number of space in the area you had for breakfast. So you wonder why I had queues down, down the corridors going, going for miles. Um, managing the issues of demand and supply, and I use the word demand and supply rather than the other way around. Demand, we know breakfast um, is very, very high. We can't tend to fill restaurants at lunchtime as it's CMB offers. Um, and in the evenings, it varies from, from the location to location.